Is this evidence that contagion is in fact setting in or in danger of setting in with lack of confidence gaining momentum in the finance sector? Well, I think it's the some of the largest banks in, in the US stepping up to make sure that there isn't a contagion effect. Um, and rather than relying on uh, the FDIC or the Federal Reserve or other federal regulators to prop up First Republic, the large banks, uh, you know, we've got our four largest banks, a couple of investment banks, five smaller banks, all investing um, literally billions of dollars into uh, First Republic. And I shouldn't really say investing, depositing. And it's a, a show of solidarity in a way in that all, nearly all of those deposits are going to be uninsured. Uh, showing their uh, faith in the strength of First Republic. So what was First Republic's problem? How has it come to this? Well, uh, a little bit of what we saw with uh, Silicon Valley Bank in that they have a large proportion of uninsured depositors. So about two thirds of their deposits are uninsured. Now SVB was over 90% and they have a large proportion of their uh, those funds invested in uh, loans and what we call held to maturity securities or longer term securities that aren't as liquid. And so they've put themselves in a position where uh, assuming everybody pays on time and there's not a deposit run, there's going to be good profits for them. But again, if they need to liquidate any of those securities early, they'd have similar problems that SVB did where they'd have to sell those at a loss. By having this infusion of liquidity from uh, these major banks and investment banks, uh, it should put uh, First Republic depositors at ease. What is the fact that these major banks pump so much money into this First Republic uh, indicate about how keen they are to settle nerves? Well, it's in everybody's interest in the banking industry to make sure that folks feel good about the banking industry or at least have confidence in the banking industry. And I think it's a good sign that the banks came together uh, and did this rather than First Republic having to rely on going to uh, the regulators for support or what some might refer to as a government bailout. And instead, it's the private sector that's handling it. And so I think that's a it's a better route for First Republic. And I think it adds more confidence to uh, the banking industry. But how many other banks could be in this position? Well, at least for banks of that size, we don't have many that have such high uh, ratios of uninsured deposits. And uh, First Republic, I think, is the highest in the country in terms of uh, loans and uh, securities relative to their deposits. Uh, where they've lent out, in essence, really about 110% of their deposits and uh, investments in the form of loans. So they have to get funding from somewhere else, and this is one way of, of them being able to do that. So again, there, uh, we've got a couple of unique banks that uh, you know have run into some neat problems, and it uh, is unfortunate these are happening at the same time. How would you describe the fact that First Republic left itself as vulnerable as, as it did with this um, uh, investment strategy? Well, uh, hindsight uh, is twenty twenty, and I do think they violated some of the basic banking 101 laws uh, that they uh, didn't manage uh, what we call the duration of their uh, investment portfolio very well. They didn't match that to the potential needs of depositors, uh, taking into account that interest rates could go up. Uh, in the US, you know, we'd had extremely low interest rates for over 10 years. And unfortunately, a lot of folks forgot that rates don't stay at zero forever. And the last year has definitely shown us that rates don't stay at zero forever with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates four and a half percent, which is the fastest 12 month increase in rates that we've seen in the US uh, in modern history. I think you described this uh, First Republic situation as a bit of a unique situation. So you, you don't believe that this is going to spread much further than it already has? There's been one or two other bank names that have popped up and I, I prefer not to, to say them here yeah. to cause any type of unnecessary fear. Uh, but looking at uh, you know some of these key ratios, there's only a couple of outliers 
Uh, you know, we've got over 4,000 banks in the United States. And so when one or two are the outliers, uh, they're the ones that get the attention, uh, all the lights being shown on them right now. Uh, and again, I think all in all, uh, the, the U.S. banking system is sound. And what about the fact that Credit Suisse was having significant troubles in the last uh, 48 hours? Uh, what's your, the extent of your knowledge about what's happening around other parts of the world um, outside the US? Well, with Credit Suisse, uh, you know, this is a bank that's lost money in five of the last 10 years. Uh, just in February, they had uh, disclosed that they had problems with internal controls. Uh, they lost $1.5 billion in the last quarter. Uh, and had lost money for five consecutive straight quarters. So this, with Credit Suisse, it should not have been a surprise that they were having trouble. They've been having trouble for quite a while. They've had management issues, again, fraud issues, uh, lots of trouble with this bank for many, many years. And uh, I think the markets did get a little spooked when you know Saudi Arabia said that they weren't going to put any more money into the bank. Uh, I'll take Saudi Arabia at their word that they said it's because they're at 9.9% ownership already. And if they, uh, there were a lot of regulatory hurdles to go above 10%. Uh, and so they ended up having to go to uh, basically the regulators and uh, secure a large loan to get them through. But Credit Suisse is a bank that, in my opinion, has had problems for a very, very long time. This is not a, a new thing for them. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like you're you're pretty confident this isn't going to get out of control any further. Like a, a couple more banks might be vulnerable in the U.S., but you're you're pretty confident that this isn't going to lead to something way more substantial. Correct. Uh, you know, it's already uh, here in the U.S. Thursday, and uh, we haven't seen you know a big domino effect of bank failures. Uh, the bank stocks have begun to recover. Um, you know, and, and when people panic, prices fall very quickly, and then it sometimes takes a little bit of time for them to recover. But again, I think all in all, things have uh, started to settle down. And, and again, I think with all of these banks coming together to support uh, First Republic, it's a good sign of unity and their faith in the in the, that the system's working. Yeah, it seemed the, the share, U.S. share market seemed to agree with you on that point and ending up pretty strongly for the day. OK, uh, William Chittenden, thanks so much for talking to us from San Marcos in Texas. Texas. Thank you for having me.